Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei. Today, no Power Query, but integration services. What we're going to be doing is we're going to take a store procedure that I'm going to run. That store procedure has perimeters. I'm going to put that into a for each container inside of SSIS. We're going to run it with different perimeters in a list. That output is then saved to a file, and the file name is dynamically based on the perimeters that we put inside of the store procedure. Well, let me show you how to do it. All right, so let's quickly look at the SQL. So we got a store procedure called select holdings. This store procedure has two perimeters. It's got the portfolio and the holding date. When I execute this procedure, so the portfolio and the holding date, what it does is it populates a table and this table then contains the holdings of a specific portfolio at that specific date, stocks for that portfolio at that date. All right, so if I execute Charlie Munger over there, for that date, it will give me Charlie Munger's details. So I want to take this table and then write this table to a file. So in SSIS, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an execute SQL task because I want to execute the store proc. So let's quickly go in here. I select the connection. This is one of my servers. Cool. And then once I'm in there, I'm going to select the execute statement. So I'm going to take this. Let's say we take the Charlie Munger query over there. So copy. Go in there and I paste it and I say, OK, there should be no issues. And when I right click and run, it executes fine. And then the content inside of the table as Jolly Munger. Excellent. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to quickly create a data flow task. Whoop. Take that output. Let's say connect it up there. And now I want to take the source So the this table over here and then take this and put it into a flat file. So take the source, OLADB source, yes, and I'm going to select the specific table. You take that table, yeah, cool, and I'm going to take it to file destination, flat file destination, quite simply drag it in there. And there, I'm just going to say create a new connection, delimited, and I'm going to create it on this location on my drive here. I'm going to call it test1. don't have to do that. Let's just say test1 CSV. Cool. That's excellent. I say map. Cool. And then if I run this, okay, if I look at the folder, there's test one, it's created. So it's all very, very much hard coded. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to create some variables. So first thing, let's say variables, create the first variable. Let's start with the variables for the store proc. So we say portfolio name, yeah. And we make that uh, string, cool. And the second one is we say holding date. We make that a date time. That's exactly what we wanna do. So then once we've done that, we're going to go into the SQL over here. All right. We're going to say, lovely. These two parameters that we put in, the portfolio name and the date, we say, make that a question mark, make that a question mark. So, okay. So, number zero, number one. So I say, cool. We go to parameters. I down from this, say, add. I'm just drop down. I select my parameters. I say, portfolio name. And that's an input, this bar char. And this is perimeter number zero. That's the first perimeter. We count from zero. And then I want to do the holding date. I say take the holding date. This is a date format and that's perimeter number one. So that syncs up with zero one basically means zero is the first perimeter. One is the second perimeter. So if you have multiple, you just like add them one, two, three, four, five. Cool. So then we say, OK, let's quickly go into our variables. Let's set some values here. I want to run it for 03 at 31st. There. Cool. So now let's quickly execute this. Say execute. Cool. If I look in this table now, you'll see that Bill Ackman ran. So that's beautiful. Now we have that. Okay. So we know that we have dynamic perimeters now set up link, linking to variables. But what I want to do now is I want to run it. I want to run this store procedure for different portfolios. So for Bill Ackman and Charlie Munger. So how do I do that? I'm going to use my for each loop container, drag it in there, open this container. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the enumerator is a for each 
item menu, uh, enumerator. So I'm just going to select item. All right. I'm going to say columns. Add the columns. Yeah, I'm going to add string because my portfolio name is string. Yes, and I'm going to add all the things I want to iterate through in this list. So let's say we take Bill Ackman and put that in there. And I'm going to take Charlie Munger. And I'm also going to put that in the second one. So we basically have our two variables running there. I'm going to map these variables. I'm going to say map this to portfolio name. So now this collection is mapped to portfolio name. Wonderful. That's as simple as that. Expand this a little bit. I drag this procedure inside of there. Yeah. And because my parameters are mapped, it's now going to run. It's going to place inside of the store proc into that portfolio name, everything in this collection. Okay, so let's quickly run that. I'm going to now execute it. So we're going to execute this container. So it ran twice. If I open it up, you can see it ran twice. Lovely. First part of our video is done. Second part is we're going to now connect this to our flow task because we want to take this file and then put the the perimeters like the date holding date into the file name that we saved. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the file name. So we say vi variables. First thing we're going to add is I like to always have a variable file path. So we call it file path. All right, I'm going to say string. I'm going to take the file path, which is this location over here. I'm going to paste it in there. Correct. Put your backslash in there. Okay, then I'm going to create a new one. So then you can always change the path we want to save it to later on. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to say this is file name. How I want to name the file. For this, I'm going to write an expression. Okay, so the expression would basically be I want to start the file name with something very simple like holdings, yeah, underscore. Then I want to say plus, I want to use, I want to use the holding date, yes. But what I want to do is I want to use the date function. So I'm going to use the day function. I'm going to say day function, yeah, day function, and close it up. So I want to have that an expression. It's going to give me an error because I need to convert this to a string. So how do I do that? I take this um, string um, converter over here to stick it in there. I'm going to say I want to make it a length of 10. Okay. If we rerun this, it's going to work. Okay. So now I want to do that for day plus month plus year. I'm just going to change that to month. And we call this year. And then I want to end the file name with csv we look at the expression so the file name is going to be this okay so based on the perimeter i put there for the date so i say okay wonderful so we're basically almost there so now what i need to do is you see if this destination file here um, uses this um, flat file connection over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click there i'm going to say properties okay i'm going to take See, this is the place, this is what it calls the file and where it saves it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on expressions and say new expression. Yeah. And the property I want to do expression on is the connection string, which is the actual file name. And I say, lovely. So the file name should be the file path. I take the file path that's dynamic plus the file name that I've created before. Let's quickly check what that looks like. So this is what it will look like. That's where it will save to. Okay, so that's done. You see it puts a little FX sign there next to the, the flat file connection manager once you've done that. So I say save. Let's quickly see in the folder it doesn't have that in there at the moment. So let's quickly run this. If we look at the folder, there we go. If we open this file, there we go. There's all the holding. So let's quickly try another one. Let's run it for December. Variables. I want to run this for 22, 12, the 31st. Yeah. Cool. So let's quickly run this. So now if I look in there, there's the 12th. Okay, so there you have it. So I hope this helped you to get some insight. Okay, cheers. BA Sensei signing out.